Mr. Mr. Speaker, this has been another impassioned debate on Brexit. I have stood here on many occasions over the past few months, answering questions and taking interventions from right honourable and honourable members. What I want to do in the minutes remaining is to set out the serious choice that faces us. Today should have been the day that the United Kingdom left the European Union. That we are not leaving today is a matter of deep personal regret to me. But I remain committed to the United Kingdom leaving the European Union, and that is why I brought this motion to the House today. There are those who will say the House has rejected every option so far. You'll probably lose, so why bother? I bother because this is the last opportunity to guarantee Brexit. And I say to all those who campaigned to leave, who voted to leave, who represent constituencies that voted to leave, indeed all of us who want to deliver on the vote to leave, if we do not vote for this motion today, people will ask, why did you not vote for Brexit? By voting for this motion today, we can send a message to the public and to the European Union that Britain stands by its word and that we will leave the European Union on the 22nd of May. And this is the reason. Listen very carefully to her message to all those who have voted to leave in the course of the past few years. What has she possibly said to the 48% actually voted to remain? Here, here. I say to the honourable gentleman that the deal that we have agreed, the arrangements and the proposals that we have put forward, absolutely apply to the 48% who voted to remain, because they recognise they recognise the necessary balance between delivering on the result of the referendum while doing that in a way that protects jobs, protects livelihoods and protects people's security. Mr Speaker, last week the EU Council agreed that Article 50 could be extended to the 22nd of May if the House approves the withdrawal agreement this week. That would give us enough time to take the withdrawal agreement bill through Parliament. We would not have to hold European parliamentary elections and we would leave the European Union. But they also agreed that if we did not approve the withdrawal agreement by tonight, the extension would only be to the 12th of April, not long enough to ratify a deal. So anyone who wants to leave with a deal would have to support seeking a further extension. Any such extension would probably be a long one, and that would certainly mean holding European elections. So approving the withdrawal agreement today avoids a cliff edge in two weeks' time. It avoids European elections. It avoids a long extension which would at least delay and could destroy Brexit. But, Mr Speaker, to secure this extension, to give us a firm exit date, we do not need to agree the whole deal today, just the withdrawal agreement. I believe, I believe there is an overwhelming majority in this House for the withdrawal agreement. Three quarters of Conservative MPs backed it in the last meaningful vote. And opposition MPs I have spoken to tell me their problem is not with the withdrawal agreement, it is with the political declaration. So I want to address the central argument put forward by the Leader of the Opposition again tonight, to this afternoon, that voting for the motion will enable a blind Brexit. It will not, and for three reasons. First, if you want to leave with a deal, then whatever future relationship you want, it needs to sit alongside this withdrawal agreement. The withdrawal agreement is fixed. It is part of any deal. Second, agreeing this motion today is not ratifying the whole deal. That will only happen once the withdrawal agreement bill has passed through all of its stages in this House and the other place and has received royal assent. What this motion today does is give us the time we need to pass the necessary legislation and complete the current debate which the House is considering about our future relationship. Now, the Government stands by the current political declaration, but we are not asking the House to approve it today. 
nor does today's vote prejudge or preempt the outcome of the process run by my right hon. Friend, the Member for West Dorset. In fact, for those options being considered, approval of this withdrawal agreement is a prerequisite. And third, in the next phase of negotiations, we have committed to give Parliament a significant and ongoing role in the process. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker if, you had selected, if you had selected the amendment in the name of the Honourable Member for Socon Trent Central and others, the Government would have accepted it. And if, if this motion carries today, we will bring forward a withdrawal agreement bill that will include commitments to implement that amendment and we will discuss the specific drafting of that with those who supported the amendment. So by voting for this motion, members are not closing any doors. They will still have the ability, through the withdrawal agreement bill, to influence that future relationship. Today's motion is not about a blind Brexit. It is about a guaranteed Brexit. Today, we can give the public and businesses the certainty. Today, we can give the public and businesses the certainty they need. Today, we can show we stand by our word. Today, we can show that we can come together in the national interest. Today. Far too much noise in the chamber. The Prime Minister is addressing the House and must be heard. The Prime Minister. Today we can show we can come together in the national interest. Today we can take a step forward together. This is a difficult day for members right across the House. I am asking members to take a hard decision, and I know that. I am asking some honourable members. In her heart of hearts, won't she accept that this Brexit will make Britain poorer, weaker, more divided, and more isolated? And the door she should not shut is the door of democracy. She should allow the people to have the final say if they want this shambles, because the leavers in my area certainly don't. Thank you. Mr Speaker, can I say to the Honourable Gentleman, as I have said to the House before, if he looks at the economic analysis and he looks at the different types of Brexit that could take place, he will see that the, Brexit, the, the, the deal that delivers on the result of the referendum and has the best economic outcome for this country is the deal the Government has put forward. Mr Speaker, as I said, I know that this is a difficult day for members right across the House. I am asking them to take a hard decision, and I know that. I am asking some honourable members to vote for a Brexit that is less than they hoped for, and that is not easy. I am asking other honourable members on the opposition benches to help me deliver on the instruction of the British people, and that is not easy either. There are good Labour members opposite who are as determined as I am to deliver the Brexit that their constituents voted for. As willing as I am to make a compromise in order to move our country forward. And at this historic moment, at this historic moment for our country, it is right to put aside self and party, right to accept the It is right to accept the responsibility given to us by the British people, and that is what I have done, Mr Speaker. That is what I have done, Mr Speaker. I have said I am prepared to leave this job earlier than I intended. I have order, order. Our proceedings are being widely watched. Please let's treat each other with respect. The Prime Minister is winding up the debate and must be heard. The Prime Minister. I have said that I am prepared to leave this job earlier than I intended, to secure the right outcome for our country. And when the division bell rings in a few moments' time, 
every one of us will have to look into our hearts and decide what is best for our constituents and our country. I give way to the honourable gentleman. I'm grateful to the I'm grateful to the Prime Minister for giving way, and she's right to say that she has sacrificed her own position to try and get she her has. deal through. Shame. But does she appreciate that in doing so, she is asking us to place our trust in who will follow her? And looking at the likely candidates, I've got to say sincerely to her, she may have sacrificed her career to put the country first, but there are plenty of people who aim to follow her who've always put themselves first above the country. Can I say, can I just say to the, can I just say to the honourable gentleman, uh, the numbers in this House will not change. The numbers across this House will be the same. The desire of this House the desire of this House to be able to have a greater role in the uh, future will not change. I have given, I've made the commitment that I have in relation to the legislation in the Withdrawal Agreement Bill, in relation to the amendment from the Honourable Member for Stoke-on-Trent Central. This, in the next stage, it will be important that there is a greater involvement of Parliament to be able to ensure that as we move forward together, as we move forward together, we get that right result for our country. But this is about our country. It is about our national interest. As I say, everybody will have to... I'll give way one, one, one last time. I'll give way to the Honourable Lady. I thank the Prime Minister for giving way. The Prime Minister say this is about the country. But with respect, Prime Minister, that is not how it's seen. Brexit withdrawal agreement, referendum, has always been about the Conservative exactly. Party. And it's right. this, this House, this House across all parties, voted for a referendum. This House, across all parties, voted to trigger Article 50. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I forget, of course, that the Scottish National Party always have a different view on this because they want to stay in the EU, they want to stay in the common agricultural policy, they want to stay in the common fisheries policy. No good, no good, for, Scottish, no good for Scottish fishermen and Scottish farmers. I had... I had said I would give one last time, but as I've just referenced the SNP, I would give way to the Honourable Gentleman. Well, it's some way to build compromise, Mr Speaker, but why did she never come forward to the Scottish Government and the Scottish National Party, offer wide-sweeping reforms and devolution for employment law on welfare, for example, in order to give Scotland the power it needs to protect itself from the measures in her deal that it doesn't like. Instead, she stuck her head in the sand, and that's why she's got nowhere with the Scottish Government or the Scottish National Party. <laughs> the Honourable Gentleman, the Government has given the Scottish Government extra powers, and they're not using them. Oh, except, 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 of course, the power to increase taxes in Scotland more than in the United Kingdom. So I say to members this. If you want to deliver Brexit, this is the moment. If you're passionate about making sure that the United Kingdom leaves the European Union, back this motion. If you care about our union and want a deal that protects it, back the motion. If you want to honour the referendum but want Parliament to shape our future relationship, back this motion. It's the right thing for our country. It's the right thing for our constituents. And with all my heart, I commend this motion to the House. Order! Order! The question is as on the order paper. As many as have that opinion say aye. Aye! Of the contrary, no. No! Division! Clear the lobby.